All right, 5.4, audio visual aids. Use audio visual aids to give you freedom, such as wireless microphones and wireless computer control. That's where you're advancing your slides. Oh, Ryan? Yeah, the, the wireless computer control that I use, and again, I, you don't use the laser pointer portion of it. You advance slides. But the one that I bought that I love okay. has a, a setting on it where you can program a time, and it has a timer on it. And you can, so what I do, as soon as I start, you know, I, I get there in the morning at, at 10 minutes to 8, then I look at the clock and I say, okay, I want to take a break in an hour and 25 from now. So I type in hour 25 start and I never have to look at my watch. I never have to do any of that. I glance down and I know exactly, I use the same one. you know, oh, I love the timer it. has a countdown. It, it vibrates yeah, it, in your hand exactly. when the time's up. Exactly. Let you know that you're... It gives you like a five minute notice too. Well, let's but, put that uh, in the textbook. Manufactured okay. by Targus, T-A-R-G-U-S. Okay. So, Great point. Yeah, I love it. And also wireless microphones. You know, you don't want to be running around. I prefer a wireless microphone that's going to be around. In my case, I have it here. You know, a lapel is, is also fine. It's not quite as, you know, acoustically as well. And if you have to, handheld. You know what I mean? You know, but you don't want to be with a tether. 5.5 equipment. Check out the meeting room and equipment before the students arrive, preferably the day before. We're talking about, we already talked about the room. But just make sure you get there the day before and check out the room. Check out your table layout. Remove any extra tables and chairs. Now is the time to do that, the day before, the night before. Remove the lighting lamps and wash on the screen. This takes yeah. time. This takes a lot of time. I've had to wait hours and hours and hours to get them convinced that I am not leaving until you take out the lights because I worked so hard to get everything right, and then there's this floodlight that flashes right on the screen, and the guy's like, oh, no, no, you're going to get the light out. I mean, I'll get a BB gun, but, I mean, somehow the light's going to go out. So just get the lift and get out there and take care of that. And So it's, it's, it's a push sometimes to get things done like that. And the last thing is, you know, again, get with them about that room temperature. This is advanced coordination. Who do I talk to? How do I work out this arrangement so that we can move on there? Continuing on 5.5, what do you do with a major failure? You know, listen, things happen. Just don't get mad. I mean, this is called life. I mean, this is just called life. Things happen that's way beyond your control, and, you know, you just don't know what to do. So the first thing is stay calm. Say, oh, okay. All right, continuing on, you know, take a break. See how long it takes for you to get things worked out. Okay, guys, let's just take a break. And you might find it. I had a seminar one time for a major, no, Texas Instruments at, their na at the world headquarters in Texas. And they lost power to the whole plant. Like 8,000 people stopped working. And I'm in a seminar room, and, and backup power didn't work either. So they were not really happy about that. It was like, okay, we have no power. And we waited 15, 20 minutes. Guess what? I did the seminar in the dark. I just continued talking and... See, you can still talk. You can still engage. There's things you can do. You know, you might not have all the visual aids. You have lighting, enough lighting, just not, you know, everything you want. Ryan? Brian? Well, I'll tell you, just recently this happened to me, and this is going back to preparation and everything else. What was that? Uh, doing a military seminar. Of course, everything I had to use was secure and had to be their stuff. So all I could bring in was my DVD with the PowerPoint on it. That's it. I couldn't bring a computer or nothing. Had to use all their stuff. In order for the system to work, some guy with a special access card had to have his thing put into the computer and logged into this and that. Well, he pulled his card out because he had to leave and thought everything was going to be fine. And I'm doing, and, and all of a sudden, apparently, after a certain period of time without the card, it just, everything shuts down. So I had to go from having a PowerPoint and a presentation and doing what I was doing to stopping and saying, okay, guys, we can handle this because nobody else, this is Saturday. There's nobody else in the facility. I said, here's what we're going to do. Open your book to this page and follow along in your book. Because now we don't have PowerPoint, period. We're done. This guy, who, I don't even know where he's at, blowing something up somewhere maybe. I'm not sure. All I knew was the facility is locked down and I have to keep teaching. <laughs> Good point. Good one. Good story. Return to the subject and act like nothing even happened, right? Okay. Continuing on. Have a backup of PowerPoint presentations on a CD or USB drive in case of a computer failure. I actually had that. I'm on an airplane. I always sit in the aisle, just the way I sit, so I can go to bathroom and get in and out, whatever. I don't have to be bothered. And then I, whatever, I'm sitting in the window. Like, okay, window, that's fine. No big deal. So I'm sitting when I'm working. I'm always working on the flight there. I always work on the flight back. That's just, so I got a glass of water. I reach over to get the glass of water from, you know, from the server, from the attendant. 
And I, when I went back, I'm not used to having a wall. It's there. When I hit the wall, and it goes, water goes, bloop, 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 right down on my laptop. And then I see my, my computer meltdown. I'm like, okay. So now when I'm playing and they bring the drinks, you know, I take my laptop, you know, <laughs> and they put it over there. I'm, like, I'm so afraid, you know, what could possibly happen. So, um, and actually I did have a backup, you know, a little flashcard. I have a, I use, in my case, I find it a lot easier to use uh, an SD card. Every computer has an SD card. Everyone. I mean, I've never seen one yet. I don't think we have one. I'm like, Trust me, you have one. You find a little black thing on the back, and you press that thing, and it actually comes out like, oh, I didn't know I had that. And you sick that little baby inside here. And I can have a flash drive also. But, uh, so bring a backup of your program, just in case of a computer failure. So I've had a problem before. You may be able to keep a copy on your website or an internet FTP site. You know, there's other ways of doing it. On a cloud. Tape down the power cords. I'm not sure why that's... Well, that's light air, but <laughs> obviously you don't want to be tripping on your, your computers. Use a remote device to advance PowerPoint. We kind of talked about that, right? And you mentioned, Ryan, a, a nice little feature there. I'll have to get that myself. 5.6 handouts. Be sure each student has a textbook. I mean, I know sometimes people are like, well, Mike, if I had a textbook, it's going to cost too much. I'm like, how can you have people take a class and not have a textbook? Uh, it... it you want them to have a tool so after the class, they can kind of go back to what you talked about. They made notes inside the textbook. So, you know, I would strongly encourage if you're teaching a class, people need to have a, a, a textbook to leave the program that you have. Now, you might be customizing things, and so there might be some unique situations that you might be creating. 5.7, lighting. Check out the lighting the night before. We talked about that. Don't dim the, the room lights. I never turn off the lights. I want my lights to be as bright as possible, which means I have to make other compromises. So I want, now we're not making the lights dim so that it, wa it don't wash out the screen. We're leaving the lights bright and figure out how to then remove the wash on the screens, which means I have to have high intensity projectors. Now, sometimes I can't get the projector. And so I got to compromise. And controlling lights can be difficult because, well, can I turn off that row? Oh no, you got to turn off all the lights in the whole room. I can't, it's a big room. No, they all, you can't, no. So now you're trying to figure out the combinations of getting the lighting just bright enough, just dim enough, just to make all the compromises. So you have to work with that, and that's where you get to the night before to make this. Not in the morning, because you want to be busy with everybody. Avoid light glaring on the projection screen. We talked about that. 5.8, we made a mention on the microphone. I'm not quite sure what, what the context was here but recommend that you have one anytime you have more than 40 students. You know, when, you ha when you're having to project your voice, and I'm sure all you guys, you know, do an eight-hour seminar, usually about lunchtime, you know, you're, if you haven't spoken for a while, especially if I haven't spoken for a few months and I speak, boy, after the first day, my throat is sore because I'm trying to project an image, even with a microphone. So when you start getting above 40 students, you want to make sure you have, even 30 students is great. I mean, if it can be smaller, that's great, but around 40 Get a microphone. Of course, we talked about the different kinds of mics, wireless, things like that. Portable system for small classes. You know, you get a little, I mean, some guys are doing local seminars in a local area there, right? You just kind of do a CEUs and you have small groups of 15, 25 people. There's nothing wrong with a little lavalier micro, you know, and have the, you know, these, uh, mic uh, the, uh, the sound system. Little, for 35 bucks, you can buy little tiny portable, you know, speakers. So think about that. The sound systems helps ensure that each student can hear you and it also saves your voice. Real important. Wherever you possibly can that's reasonable, take one with you. Okay, let's talk about some microphones and microphones and sound systems. A handheld wired microphone ties you down. You know, you really don't want a microphone with a tether. As a matter of fact, I had that happen when I was in Philadelphia with like 400 people at the IEI dinner and they had a handheld wired because of whatever the situation was. And you're like, see, I like to walk. I like to move. I like to connect with somebody. I like my hands to be free. It isn't like I'm trying to move this back here and I get, oh, 
as far as I can go. But, you know, you deal with what you have to deal with. So that's your least favorite option as it comes to a microphone. The second one is a handheld wireless microphone. You know, you'd prefer not to if you're going to be speaking for an extended period of time. Listen, hey, Mike, can you come up here and give us a few words? Well, maybe the presenter that is there has a wireless microphone, but they're going to hand you something, or you have a presenter, you're bringing a student up to the class. Yes, you want to have a handheld wireless microphone, and that's perfectly fine there. But if you possibly can, the next best option is a wireless clip-on microphone that you put on your, your, your shirt or your tie. There's a little disadvantage to that is because, hey, guys, if you take a look, and when you bend down and you're looking at your code book or you're looking at your computer, right, then all of a sudden the sound changes, and then it changes a little bit. And you talk over here, and then you talk over here, and then, of course, you talk down here. So the sound kind of – so just be aware of some of the limitations on the clip-on microphone. And now what I wear is I wear – a wireless on the ear microphone. Then that was, you know, it's it's expensive, but what it allows is it allows this pickup to be right where the voice is coming out, and it doesn't matter how I turn my head, it has no effect, and my hands are going to be free, and it gets the best possible quality. So that's what we work with. So you know, you find out what your option. We just want to give you the information as you work on, and then turn wireless microphones off during breaks. Uh, I've gone to the bathroom couple times and you know it's streaming live you know and uh, I've actually streamed videos live while I was streaming live you know what I mean so yep. if you can try to remember to turn off if you have something like a uh, over the ear or, or a lapel platforms platforms are necessary for your students to see you when your class reaches more than 150 we talked about that I don't like it I'm not comfortable but it's not about me they want to be able to see you interact with them. So it's something that you need to do. So here's the scenarios. Not the best thing for me, but it's definitely the best thing for them. You determine, and the height of the platform is a function of, you know, how many people in the room. A podium, 5.10, or how do you say that, lectern? Lectern. Yep, lectern. I like that word. Don't use them. I get to almost every corporate organization when I'm going out there, they have a podium all set up with a microphone in there, and then they have the wireless cord, and that's where you put your laptop computer, and I'm like, oh, man. I got to pull up all the tape. I got to pull up all the wire. I got to get the podium out of there. I got to move the screen from the corner. I got to get the platform out of there, get the tables and chairs. I got to get the water out of there. I got to move everything out of there. I got to <coughs> move the screen. Got that inside. I get the first two couple rows. I got to move them out of the way. I got to get rid of the extra tables, the extra chairs. It's a lot of work to get the room prepared. And I have to do all that. And I don't want a podium. I don't want to be holding on to something. I don't want to be stuck in one spot. I don't want to be... You know, where there's a barrier between me and the student. I want to be flexible. I want to be able to make contact with you at a multiple level. So now, I have spoken behind a podium where there's a dinner meeting and you have 10 people up on a platform with five people sitting on one side of the lecture, right, of the podium, and the other five people on the other side. And, hey, Mike, can you come up here and take an award or give a few comments? Well, yeah, yeah. But, but even in that setting... If I'm going to be speaking at, in that evening, at that setting, I will not stand behind the podium. I will take my mic, and I'm out there, and I'm walking around the people there. So I will use a podium because it's there out of courtesy, out of respect, because it's a five- or ten-minute conversation. But if I'm going to be speaking, nope, not happening. They place a barrier between you and your student. An adjustable table for a laptop allows you to move around and improve your comfort level. Um, we actually have, when we do our seminars, we have a table that can adjust the height. What height do I really want it to be? Because sometimes it's too low. So it's not often you're going to get that opportunity. So, I mean, but if you happen to be doing your little program or a program in an area that you're doing on a regular basis and you kind of bring in your stuff, you bring your stool, you bring your little table, bring your equipment, you got your little mic, your speakers, your little microphone, you set it all up, you got a great little system going inside there. Well, they make tables that just kind of adjust up and adjust down. Give you the information so you're aware of that. 5.11 projectors. Um, this is a, a complicated thing, projectors, and I haven't ever figured out the best way to find a projector. But So my system is this way. When I travel and I use projectors from the venues for, as I travel, when I find a great projector, I write that name down, and that's the one I buy when it's time for me to buy a new one. Rather, because I found out you can't check lumens, 
I mean, and the brightness and all that stuff because I've gotten projectors where I bought a new projector. I had a 2500 lumen. I got a 3500. I'm thinking, that's going to be great. And I get the new projector, and I play it on the screen in my house, and I play the old projector, and I'm thinking, that new projector is not brighter than the old projector. So now, how, and, and, you, and, and today's day, you can't get a projector to try a projector. You have to look online, you have to talk to somebody, and then they have to ship it to you. And they go, well, wait a minute now, you can't be returning this. So the easiest way is if you're a speaker, as you travel and you see other projectors and you get some, some experience with them, make a note on projectors that work for you. You know, we have different types of projectors. Uh, I always try to use my own projector. And I've always, I won't say, I would say I've been traveling with my own, per I hear I'm traveling around the country and I bring my own projector, I bring my own microphone, my own transmitter and receiver, the whole thing is a lot of weight, but they're getting lighter and lighter and lighter. But the last six months, okay, and that's, that's the one we're using at our seminars, not the ones that I actually carry with me. Mine's, I think, probably five pounds, maybe s six pounds. And so... The last six months, the last couple of seminars, I have not brought my projector because I'm finding out that the projectors that are being used in venues today are much better than they used to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I'm um, starting to change me taking my own projector. So brightness. Now, I don't know, Brian, you know, you might write this section a little bit here, maybe make it general and I don't know, 2,500 lumens, uh, maybe... Talk, what I'm talking about, maybe rewrite that section because I don't know if we can say lumens. No, I, I actually did go through all this, and, and these are really good guidelines. Okay. If you can't bring a projector with you, what, what you need is some way to communicate to the place that you're going, this is my expectation. Wonderful. And these numbers are based on what would be considered industry standards. Okay. You know, and it's going to give you a decent quality at least. All right, so looking at the screen, you've done the research. You tell the people, listen, I need to be 2,500 lumens. Got to have a 4,001 or higher contrast ratio. I'd like it to be an LCD projector, if possible. A DLP, and that's from Texas Instruments, uh, is the best. I think it's digital. Um, I forget. That doesn't matter what it is. And then, of course, now I didn't know this. They make laser projectors. Yeah, the, the laser is, is the newer, not newest, but newer addition to the lineup. It's actually been around for a while, but just in the last probably six months to a year, the prices have actually come to the point where average people can use them in a corporate setting, in a business setting, in a seminar setting. And I expect in the next few years, the prices are going to come down to the point where they become very common, have a much longer uh, life. There's no lamp involved and they're much brighter. Just everything about them is just fantastic. Okay. Continue on 511. Study specifications using internet resources such as, and so you have in our textbook uh, possibly some places to kind of get more information Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Make those decisions. I like my system. When I find a great projector at a venue where I travel to, I make a note about that manufacturer and that model so that when it's time for me to get my next one, at least I know that what that <coughs> quality is. 5.12 refreshments. You know, oftentimes you won't be involved in this part of the business, but you might be doing a little seminar and on your own and creating your own little business model here, and then all of a sudden you're providing coffee and what have you. So let me give you some formulas. This is the formulas that we use. One gallon of coffee per 15 people in your class. One gallon of uh, decaf per 50 people in your class. One half gallon of tea per 100 people. No refreshment in your contract. That means that they'll ask you, would you like to have this refreshed at the break time? I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, that'd be a great idea. W wouldn't you want them to be refreshed? And you're like, yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, perfect. Then what happens, that means that whatever was not consumed is they remove and they replace it with all new breast, all new fresh, which is another three more gallons of this and a gallon of this. And then at lunchtime, they refresh it again. In the afternoon break, they refresh it again. They put it in four different times. And here you were thinking the coffee was going to cost you $400. And it costs you $1,600 because they set it up four times. Do not refresh. Use these formulas as a guide. Also make sure in your text is that you tell people not to... Oh, let me, all right, let's go back to the bottom. Let me finish this one thing here. Leave the pots out until they're empty. 
So what you do is you tell the hotel, set it up, and you make sure the hotel knows that nobody's authorized to request more coffee. Because what I've had happen to me is that I, at the end of the day, I get this massive bill. I'm like, what's going on? They say, well, you ran out of coffee. I said, but I didn't ask for coffee. Yeah, well, somebody asked for coffee. What happens is the guy said, hey, listen, oh, excuse me. Yes, and the hotel, yes. How can I help you? Yes, and we're out of coffee. Can you get some more coffee? Okay. <laughs> so then they go get more coffee. And, and uh, can you give me some cookies? Yeah, yeah, sure. They bring the cookies and the coffee, and they get all kinds of stuff. And the hotel thinks that you're asking them, and you don't know anything about what's going on, and now you have a big conflict at the end. So you tell the hotel, this is the person that's only authorized to request this, and this is the formula. And you get that in writing in the contracts because the hotels do make money in this area completely, so be very careful. And do not remove anything. If I paid for the coffee and the donuts or the cookies or the fruit, leave it there, including just leave it there because eventually it will get eaten up. Continuing on refreshments. Soda is on consumption. Would you like to have soda for 100 people? No. No. I want you to have X amount, of, and at the end of the day, we count how many cans you didn't use. So if you had a 50 cans of Coke out there or soda, at the end of the day, you count, there's 20 left. Okay, that means I pay for 30. I would not include a lunch if you're going to be setting up a seminar if you have an option because lunches are very expensive. But sometimes you're sitting with a hotel and it's actually cheaper to have lunch or you kind of have to have lunch because if you have lunch, you don't have to pay the room charge. So you kind of have to do the math to make sure that it's going to work out for you. So watch the formulas and if you need to include lunch. Um, but sometimes you can get a venue that like a, a convention center, a little civic center. Sometimes you can get the room for a couple hundred dollars. But the problem with that is that they don't even provide you for lunch or coffee or drinks. Then you got to do what? Everybody has to go out. And that's the, not quite as nice. Now, of course, we provide lunch and we provide the coffee and we, you're in one spot. But I mean, so you have to decide, there's a cost factor in here. You know, you got to be able to pay for that. So meeting logistics, you know, figure out what's the best way to make that happen. But you got to talk about it. You got to know about it. Lunch, order 90% of what you expect to arrive. So if you think you're having 100 people, order 90 lunches. Have the contract specify who's authorized to approve charges and approve all charges every day. So if you're going to be there on a multiple-day venue, and I'm only talking to Ryan, like you said, this is a unique kind of person. That's not everybody listening to this, but there is somebody watching this DVD. is like, oh, or this video, like, oh, yeah. Make sure that you contract, and every day you have an accounting. What happens is you have a multiple-day venue, and you get there on the second or third day when it's over, and now you have all these charges, and now you have a question. No. Hey, listen, I had 50 drinks. You got 50 drinks. There was 25 of them that we returned, so that's 25 drinks. Hey, listen, we didn't refresh the coffee. Oh, we didn't? Then you have to go through this every single day, and it starts all over again the next day. Okay, we're finishing up part five, the classroom. Let's kind of do a little review of the summary here. Capture the students' imaginations because of the environment, because of what you've created before they walk in. Don't teach in an unacceptable method. We can't say don't teach, right, because it, you can't be absolutes. I mean, it's, you know, try not to. You know, do the best you can to make your environment the best you can. Make sure the classroom layout doesn't feel cramped. Move the tables and chairs and get rid of extra stuff and look at the room and get the projector, move the screen, do what you got to do to get it right. Use the proper audio and visual equipment. We talked about giving you some information as to how to get the right stuff. 